Hello, everyone, and welcome to another issue of People's Health Dispatch. Uh, for those of you who have su subscribed to the newsletter, you will know that last week, uh, or during the week of April 7th, we had a special issue focusing on World Health Day and on People's Health Day. Uh, and today we are here to discuss a bit more about what happened on 7th April this year with uh, two activists from Catalonia. We are here with Francesc and Uri. And we are going to talk about a campaign that they organized uh, dur during, uh, during People's Health Day and as part of the uh, Health Rights Action campaign. So welcome, Francesc. Welcome, Uri. Thank you for joining us here today. And Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so we're really excited to hear more about the actions that you did. And maybe I thought that we might start with just talking a bit uh, about how it started. So. Uh, where did the idea come from and what was the process actually that you engaged in uh, to bring uh, to bring this uh, this campaign to fruit? Well, uh, Uriol and me have been working together in this project or process called Health Rights Action. And uh, one of the things we do is to strengthen the movements for the right to health in Catalonia. We've been doing this for a while, and that this means we work with a vast array of movements. And uh, for this year's 7th of April, we thought that there was room for improvement for the campaign. Because we've seen campaigns in the last years, and they, they were okay, but they, they the, 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 we thought we could we could we could manage to to do something more with, with a, a little more impact and a and a bit more of a collaboration coordination between all, all the movements and moreover not only the health movements but also movements who stand for other rights that as you all know, are related to health. Besides the fact that we identified no, as a health rights action the possibility to somehow improve and do this collective thing together, uh, when we were planning the year, uh, we had a meeting with all these uh, movements and we identified, no, they, they explained all of them that the situation has been very hard for the last uh, months, that they are really tired and exhausted and that situation of the health system after the COVID and after many political situations is quite extreme, no? so that it was a moment for a unitary action. So it was, uh, I think that one of the things which made it interesting is that we had detected uh, ourselves as a project, let's say, the, the, the need or the opportunity, but also it was something that the movements wanted to do, no? so that really created the, the possibility for a unitary action, no? which, uh, you know, usually is not so easy. And uh, what Francesco was explaining about this uh, Kakakom, uh, as Francesco uh, said, it's, uh, it was one day uh, where our um, goal, our aim, was to create uh, a campaign, uh, as we said, from zero to 100, no? uh, a complete campaign in one day, no? which we know already, we knew already that it was very, uh, ambitious and we didn't uh, get to the end but at least what we created was uh, the common ground that uh, there was 30 organizations and movements and collectives who participated which participated and uh, what we did was to build the agreement from the ground from the political vision uh, which was the first step that we did in the morning in any case and uh, so little by little from this political vision we created uh, the whole idea of a communication campaign no? that uh, during the month after uh, until April 7th, um, what we are doing this year is less uh, producing actions and uh, we are more getting into the actions which are organized by the movements and trying to feed them, uh, strengthen them, uh, put whatever we can. No? And I think that this is what happened with the 7th of April and I thought it was very interesting that we really, it was something which was on the air, that there needed to be a, a unitary action. No? And then taking this opportunity and making it grow because uh, like it was somehow um, desired by many social groups no? was what made it somehow uh, successful or more, uh, we were more able to create this unity, which usually is, is, is more difficult. No? I found it very interesting. 
thank you both. This was really interesting to hear. Uh, and now I was thinking that maybe we could spend some time talking about uh, the content of the campaign. So if I'm not mistaken, it had uh, quite a specific focus, which you both mentioned that was decided on collectively. Uh, and it was uh, a campaign which focused on a slogan uh, like this was this was not health or this is not health. So could you tell me a bit more about how you know how you chose this topic and what it actually means? Okay, so during this hackathon, one of the things that we came up with is the slogan for the campaign. As I told you, it was a it was a day of furious brainstorming between activists, communication experts, all kinds of people. Um, after several ideas, it was not easy. There was I was in the table that was deciding the slogan, and the, at, at a certain point, it didn't seem like we were going to agree on anything good. But suddenly, someone said, "No, la salud no era yo." In Catalan, it means this is not health, but it has like a, it's like an like like an idiom in Catalan, which means. This is not what it was supposed to be, more or less. Not a show. This is not working, etc. So uh, we thought it was good because this this idea, this hashtag, this this motto allowed us to uh, single out all the things that are not working in our health model and our health system. And we could mention these things, give some uh, numbers, some data about these things, and uh, tag them as this is not health. And afterwards, we can uh, we can say what health should be in contrast with these things that are not working. So, so we saw immediately that it had very good possibilities and with, with with this thing in mind we organized all the ideas and all the uh graphic designs all the messages of the campaign the analysis that we did uh when i said no this this uh, agreeing on the political vision was that uh, the difficulties and the situation of in the system in the health system uh, is unsustainable and it's uh, very bad so the kind of the political approach that we took um, was that um, it should be a campaign to start regaining rights not uh, and uh, not to keep defending ourselves no? like uh, we, we were like analyzing that uh, we are losing more and more rights and more and more um, um, like uh, yeah, like the system is going worse and worse in terms of uh, public health so it, it sounded like we can, we should stop defending ourselves and we should counter attack. No? So it should be a campaign which is like we were also deciding no? that the, 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 the approach and the language that it should be really serious and denouncing no? and, um, and that uh, we should be very firm in the campaign that we should do. That's why it's a very negative uh, statement. But in the sense that, as Francesc said, um, we should also be giving answers. No? Would you like to say maybe something about uh, some of the key messages that you shared? So you said, you know, there were several examples of what health was supposed to be during the pandemic, and it was not. And I think this is something that a lot of people around the world can, you know, can, can relate to. So uh, can you maybe single out a couple of problems that uh, you encountered in Catalonia when health is concerned in the pandemic so maybe one of the things which is uh, to be underlined of, of this part of the campaign is that um, we had this graphic uh, designs no? and that um, together with the graphics we, we try to make some the, the uh, to combine them uh, combine them with specific data no? so that uh, the whole campaign would be uh, very touching because people could understand very practically not just by um, general denounces which we are used to do ourselves no? like uh, uh, complaining about the, the system not working we seek for simple data that would um, show that there was a problem for example we were saying like uh, in the campaign about 
privatization. So all of the data were related to the four uh, special measures that we were asking. And one of them, for example, was saying that uh, 5,000 million um, uh, of euros from the public uh, healthcare budget are going every year to uh, private hands. No? So it explains very well how uh, bad the situation is no? and how unfair it is. No? Or we were also like another one, which was about privatization and lack of uh, transparency that um, uh, companies um, hired by the municipality to make uh, home attention uh, were taking two thirds of the salaries uh, which are given for the home workers. No? So that's kind of things that really help explain very easily to people who don't know about uh, how the system works, how unfair uh, the distribution of the of the system, the health system is, no? Yes. Just to give a couple more examples, for instance, of the kind of messages we were launching. Like uh, primary healthcare, only 12% of the budget goes to primary healthcare, while the World Health Organization recommends 25%. About about precarity of work, forty uh, percent of of the staff of the Catalan Institute of Health has a temporary contract, for instance, or uh, eight out of ten nurses does not have a permanent contract. Uh, we tried to make it the most real and human possible. No? So besides the, um, the social media campaign, which started with uh, this uh, awareness raising uh, through the posters and so on. Um, um, so we had a, a, a unitary demonstration, which was happening on the 3rd of April. So for one week, we were kind of um, uh, building, uh, bringing attention to the demonstration. And there was the demonstration as a central act. And then, um, uh, besides the demonstration, uh, on the week from the 4th to the 7th, what we did was creating more communication actions with uh, testimonials on video on uh, where people were explaining first person how the system, how in their own experience, uh, the system, the health system is not working. No? Um, no, and basically, uh, I think that the relevant thing is that on the 7th of April, uh, we had some physical actions. Uh, first of all, we had these actions on the primary health care centers uh, where um, doctors were taking the, um, the central, um, how you say, uh, microphones, uh, the central um, me megaphony uh, in the centers. And they were uh, explaining that uh, it's the 7th of April and that uh, there is this campaign denouncing that um, the healthcare system is not working and that uh, bringing all this data that we produced so that uh, it was kind of a awareness raising for the users of the, of the system and for the doctors themselves. No? That was one thing that which was happening in the healthcare uh, centers um, together with uh, uh, an action which was that uh, using all those posters printed, uh, putting them uh, uh, in the centers. And um, we thought that this was interesting because this is not a place where usually we have uh, communication spaces, no? and that it was creating a space for a reivindication and demonstration, uh, which was quite uh, special. And then we made another action, which we found uh, was interesting, and we still don't know which impact it had, which was which we called it collapsing uh, the emails of the main responsible people of the health system uh, by sending them hopefully thousands of emails on the 7th of April at, seven, at 12 um, at noon with all the same reivindication. No? So the idea was a collapse by having hundreds of emails to the same people uh, telling them uh, that the system should change. No? Uh, and it was kind of the collapse, like the system is collapsing, uh, we are uh, collapsing your email with our demands. No? On which levels do you think that the campaign uh, will continue uh, and what kind of kind of expectations do you have out of it? Okay, as Uriol said, in November, there's going, to be, there's going to be the negotiations for the budget of the Catalan government, okay? that ha have to be approved by the parliament. So uh, 
we want that the demands of the campaign are taken into, into account. So the campaign will at least continue until November. Okay. Uh, what we want is more people to sign the uh, manifesto uh, in order to create more political momentum. Uh, we want that the city councils in Catalonia approve what we call motions in favor of the measures uh, explained in the manifesto. Uh, we also uh, uh, are planning with the social movements. I mean, it's it's not what we, Uriol and me, want. This is something that we have decided uh, with the social movements uh, to sit with the with the political representatives in order to explain the uh, vindications of the campaign in uh, order to try to gather support for our measures. Uh, we have a specific campaign on primary healthcare that is, it, it's, it has been devised by Amnesty International, but it's going, it's not going to be an Amnesty International campaign, it's going to be a, uh, everybody's campaign that specifically aims at uh, allocating 25% of the health budget to primary health care, which is one of the, of the demands of a manifesto as well. And after November, since our intention is to continue working with the social movements, I think, I think and uh, that we will continue on uh, uh, probably preparing next year's 7th of April with, uh, let's see if we have to uh, make the same demands or hopefully new ones if these all demands are met. The campaign has been going on uh, for uh, two whole weeks, so it's been quite a long campaign. And uh... So what we, and it, it hasn't been just a social media campaign. Thank you so much, Wuri and Francesc, for sharing with us today in People's Health Dispatch. Uh, we'll see the rest of you in about two weeks, and we hope to hear more about people's campaigns for People's Health Day and for of their struggles for health uh, in the next issues too.